Hey, what is going on guys? This is Coded Steel and welcome to yet another App Inventor tutorial. This one is unfortunately labeled distance. This is not what we're going to be covering. Um, but just so you guys are aware, yes, they did add a proximity sensor to App Inventor. And I think I, I mentioned this a few videos ago. Uh, I've tried it. It's pretty terrible. So unless they make an improvement to it, uh, I don't really see it serving anyone's needs for any reason uh, whatsoever my tablet couldn't even use it and my phone could but it only returned zero or eight um, and you had to be really close to it in order for it to say uh you know zero and then really far away from it in order for it to say eight so it's kind of it's it, they need to really do some work on that so um, until then I, I wouldn't recommend anybody wasting their time with it and i'm not going to do any videos on it so all right, um, this video though, aside from it saying distance, everything else on here is accurate. What we're going to be doing is um, somebody had asked me about uh, cascading lists, like making it to where, okay, let's say I select, um, you know, a horror, or like if you're at a movie theater, if I select a the like the horror genre, I want it to where only horror movies will pop up and then I select that horror movie and then I can do something with that information. Or foods, if I select, that's my example, what my example is going to be. Um, you know, fruits, vegetables, meats, uh, grains. If I select one of those, I want to be able to select all the foods that are within that category without any of the vegetables showing up. If I select fruits, I only want fruits to show up. So apples, oranges, stuff like that. So someone had asked, you know, how to make something like that happen. Well, I haven't really covered the list viewer uh, element, I don't think, at really at all. Um, and that was under the user. Yeah, the list view, I might have covered that once, maybe? I, I don't even remember. I actually think I used list picker, too. Yeah, this is list picker that I used. And uh, I don't think we covered the list picker element at all. I don't really like the list view element it's just uh, I don't know it wasn't it's not one of my favorite elements in here the list picker though is is great um, it works really well it works the way I want it to be able to work and it's just uh, all around I think a pretty good element so without further ado let's kind of jump into this app and uh, cover the so the the list picker element so specifically what this app is going to do is it's going to go ahead and when you click on this button right here, which is the list, clicker, list picker button, it's going to give you a choice between the major food groups. You select that and then it's going to reorganize and restructure the list to where it just contains the foods for that category. Once you select the food for that category, it's going to take that information, it's going to populate it in this text field, and then when you hit search, it will go on the internet, provided you're connected to an internet connection, and will search that um, I could have done something else with that information that's just what I decided to do this is all some all all this uh, viewer asked me to do was to do lists show them how to you know change it to where two lists you can choose something underneath the other list so that's exactly what I'm doing all right to get started uh, drag your list picker button in uh, actually drag in a horizontal arrangement first as you guys can see I have a horizontal arrangement then drag in your list picker and your search button rename them appropriately um, and then drag in a text box above that. And the other things you need to do, drag in the tiny database and an activity starter. And you can leave the activity starter in the tiny database um, blank because you don't need, that's this is a local web, this is not a web tiny database, this is a, a tiny database on your phone so or your tablet or whatever device you're using. So that's pretty much it to the user interface for this one, nothing really special. Um, all right, blocks. So kind of, there's a little bit of stuff going on here in the blocks portion of things. Um, we have a category, we have a subcategory, and we have what's called an indexer. The indexer will make sense in a second, but you guys can see it set to false by default. So, okay, we're probably going to toggle, toggle it between false and true is hopefully what you guys are already thinking. All right. Um, Screen one, when a screen is initialized, we want to set the elements of the list picker to make a list. Um, with a list picker, it's the same thing as a list. You have two ways of entering information. You can do elements, which means you assign a list to it, or you can do elements from string, which means that everything must be separated by a comma. Um, it's your choice as to what you do. 
but that's the way I decided to do it was make a list. Um, so that's what I did. All right, so now we have our fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, and grain all assigned to the list picker elements. All right, the other thing now that we need to do is we need to go ahead and say, all right, well, when something's done with the list picker, so as soon as you click the list picker button now, this is what's going to show up. All right, let's say I select vegetables. Okay, so I picked now, so that was after picking, I picked vegetables, so after picking, if it's not, if, if not global indexer, literally meaning if global indexer is false. So if this value is false, make it true and then make it to where this loop will run. But, um, so then it comes in here, it says set global category to list picker selection. Okay. So what, what are we doing there? All right. What that means is that the category vegetables that I selected is going to be set equal to the category element. So this variable will now be populated. All right. And then what we do is we make a decision on that category. We go ahead and we say, okay, if the global category was fruits, then sus, uh, reconfigure the list to make all of, all of these fruits appear. If not, if the vegetables make it to where all of these vegetables appear. If it's meats, make all of these meats appear. If it's dairy, make all of this dairy stuff appear. And then finally, we just have an else statement because if it's not dairy, if it's not meat, it's not vegetables, and then it's not fruits, guess what? That must mean it's grains. So we can just use an else statement. Don't even have to specify a condition. And it will know automatically, okay, this is what I need to display. So that's always nice that it's smart enough to understand all that stuff. So then what happens next is we call this list picker one.open. What does that do? Well, that is the equivalent of re-clicking the list picker button. So when I click this for the first time, it's going to open the list, all right? And I'll be able to select a food group. As soon as I select that food group, since I called list picker one.open down here, it's automatically going to reopen the list without me clicking the button. So that's kind of nice. This is what the um the viewer was asking for was the fact that, okay, how do I make it to where as soon as I click one thing, it turns around and it pulls another list up with just the cat, uh, just the fruits that are, or whatever that are in that category. Um, so that is specifically what uh, this list picker one dot open is does. You guys will see that in action in just a second. And the last thing we need to do is set this global indexer to true. Um, why do we set the global indexer to true? Obviously, it's just because we don't want to run this loop again. We want to run this loop the next time something's picked. So that's essentially what's going on here. All right. So now that all that stuff is done, all right, well, that's, we, we picked vegetables. All right, everything is going to be vegetables now in the list. Now everything is going to be switched to vegetables in this list, um, list picker. So now we select the vegetable. Um, that value goes um, now goes back into this after picking loop. And then it comes down here and it runs this now. It says, okay, subcategory, which is a uh, fancy way for just saying the food that's in that category. You go ahead and you assign that to the, um, or you assign that to subcategory, excuse me. Um, so, and then the other thing you got to do is you got to re restructure your list. You got to make it to where fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, green, all, blah, blah, blah. Go, all goes back into the uh, list selection. So when the next time we click on the list, we can pick a new food. So, and then textbox one dot text. Um, this is just us setting the category and the subcategory. So I put the category in there. I put a space. Um, that's a space. It's kind of hard to see, but that's what that, there's a space there. And then the get global subcategory. And then we set the global indexer back to false. So it won't run this loop again. It'll run this loop the next time. So pretty straightforward, nothing really fancy to it. Um, but this is what was requested, just, just something kind of that uh, shows the uses of the list picker um, and how you can, you know, make it to where you can toggle in between lists and all of that stuff. All right. And then finally, the other thing here is this when button one dot click call web search. OK, call web search and search for what's in the text box. Well, what is web search? Web search is this procedure up here. So the reason I structured this into a procedure is because it's not very intuitive to see this. Um, obviously, if you see web search at the end, you're probably going to realize, oh, he's trying to do a web search. This is the way I, if you guys haven't watched my lab video 
on the Surrey for Android. I recommend you taking a look at that. Um, I also use this, make use of this web search uh, functionality in there as well. So, um, and then we're doing a query, which basically means we're asking um, a question or we're trying to find something or we're trying to, you know, obtain some information. So, um, uh, that was, that's good. And then what are we searching for? Well, what we have in this text box here. So, as you guys can see, it this procedures don't normally, well, d by default, they don't have um, a value that you can pass to the uh, function, but you can you can select a value to pass by moving an input block in. That's what I did here. I moved this input block in, so M the input X is actually this text that we can pass to it. I could have made this a global variable all the same and done all that. I figured this was a little bit more um, just... It's a little bit more uh, program or, uh, structured the way a programmer would do it. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I really didn't talk about this stuff a lot, guys. But if you do any other programming um, stuff, if you program in like Python or C or any of those other programming languages, um, it's really good. It's a good idea to not, you know, use global variables all the time. In fact, um, you guys, uh, for those of you who don't understand, this is actually a bunch of cat of classes. So this is probably a method within the class action, which inherits from the class intent, which inherits from, which is uh, inherits from the class Android. So what's honestly going on here is the Android is the parent class object here. Then this is the child class object. And this is a child class object of this child. This is a child, and then this is probably a method within this child class. Literally, that's, I mean, that, that's how a lot of this stuff <laughs> is, uh, is, is cascaded here. They can organize it. Classes are a fancy way of being able to organize um, uh, actions that you can perform and uh, whatever else. So um, what we're doing here, obviously, we do the query, blah, 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 blah. Then I say start activity. Start activity, for this case, is the equivalent of saying, OK, well, let's search the internet now. Start activity starter does not need to just be internet searches. You can use it for other things. You can use it to start other apps on your uh, tablet, blah, blah, blah. I just choose to use it for this because I figured, eh, you know, this is kind of what I'm uh, the main thing that I know how to use it for. There are other things I might experiment with in the future to uh, to uh, make other things happen, like maybe pull up different apps and maybe try to even recover information from other apps. But uh, for now, uh, that's exactly how this whole thing works. So obviously, as always, we got to do a demonstration. Otherwise, you know, how do you guys believe that, you know, I actually did this correctly? So I want to show you guys this works. Um, if you hit this button right here, it does say vegetables by default, but um, that's just because it has to have a default value. I suppose I could have made its default a blank string, um, but there's just no there's really no point in doing anything like that so now you guys can see we have this list of stuff i'm going to select greens because i don't think i've ever done greens before so green pops up guess what we went into the green subcategory everything for greens popped up which is great that's exactly what we wanted to have happen here so now we can go ahead and say all right well now i want to pick uh rice i don't know okay we have green rice um not really the most intuitive thing you could search for on the uh, internet, but <laughs> you, you can do it. So then you can click the search button and it's going to pull up the browser and it's going to say stuff about rice, anything that pops up. Um, like I was saying, this might not be the most intuitive example to show you guys um, how to do it, but the whole point of this video was just to show you how to use the list picker elements to cascade information like that. So green rice, searching for green rice might not be useful for most of you guys out there, but um, that, that's what we just did, I guess. Um, all right, uh, without that's that's pretty much all I have for you guys for this tutorial. Um, I may have another tutorial posted this weekend. I'm thinking about starting my tutorials in Python now. Um, and so that'll be really exciting, I, I think. And uh, Anyways, uh, that and I'm also working on a few other App Inventor projects right now that I'm still trying to get up and running. Uh, not quite uh, ready for those yet, but we're getting there. Um, anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. Please uh, like, comment, subscribe. 
um, and I will see you guys in a future tutorial.